So it's not just some people that are protesting carbon trading. It's, it's all nations, really, and my nation is highly against carbon trading right now because of what's happening with the tar sands. What's happened with the tar sands is, is we now know that it's one of the greatest contributors to climate change and carbon in the atmosphere and now they've introduced carbon trading to the area and we're now seeing the way for the, these giant multinational company companies to get away uh, out of feeling guilty um, of offsetting their emissions and that what that does is it allows these companies to continue to pollute at a high high level the air quality is already so bad up north that it's been the new release study has has indicated that co2 emissions are per year from the oil refineries from the tar sand refineries up up in northern alberta um, contribute to the equivalent of 1.35 million new cars each year. So each year this this is happening up there and these refineries are only, there's more and more every year. In 2007, 67,000 new permits were requested from the Alberta and the Canadian government for permits for development and expansion projects of the tar sands that are highly affected to traditional areas of not only my nation but the neighboring nations and around. Um, these permits to develop the tar sands are polluting the air, the soil, the waterways, they're killing off the plants, they're poisoning the, the fish and all the wildlife, they're poisoning the, the, the all the subsistence foods, water that the people in that area have been using for time and memorial. Up until about 10 years ago, my nation, the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation, and the, and the town that they live in, in Fort Chippewan, was an 80% subsistence community. Since the last 10 years, with the expansion projects of the tar sands, they now cannot drink the water directly from the, from the lakes. They cannot fish. They can fish, but there are signs that state that if you are pregnant, or a child under the age of 12 that you should probably not eat fish um, and even if you are eating fish you should limit your fish consumption the wildlife is not recommended to eat anymore um, so we're dealing with a huge huge serious food issue in the area and this is a flying community a community that's completely isolated from there are no roads to this community and so all of their food now has to be flown into the community and this is a community that doesn't have a whole lot of economic development. Previous to the expansion and the development of tar sands there wasn't a strong need for a huge giant economy up there because they were 80 percent subsistence. They had what they needed to survive. Now we're dealing with a community that has no economic development other than the tar sands and the tar sands are the only way that they can see money into their communities and they need money now in order to buy and live and to actually have the ability to live like healthily and half the time the food that they get in these communities is bad food. We're seeing an increase in diabetes. Uh, this, this is from the change in food. The other thing we're seeing an increase is cancers, lymphoma, uh, leukemia, other rare forms of bile duct cancers that are caused from the chemicals that are used in the tar sand development and yet these companies are, are able to continue their expansion projects and continue with their emissions and continue with the, the pollutants that they create because of carbon offsets, because of there's, there's no way to regulate these things and yet these permits continually get granted year after year after year. Moratoriums have been requested by the Miskasu Cree Nation which is the neighboring nation to my nation. They have been requested from my nation, the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation, and this has been further supported by the 43 Alberta Chiefs of Alberta in 2007. The same year that 67,000 new permits were submitted to the Alberta government, 98.9% .9 of them were granted. Yeah.